Welcome to The One Reviewer, my name is Will, where I do tech unboxing, tech reviews, and tech tutorials. And in today's episode, this could be completely filmed on the Instant 360 One R. I'm also not going to use the external microphone. I'm going to use a microphone that is built into this Instant 360 One R to show you uh, the quality of both the video and the sound. One of the main reasons why I got the Instant 360 One R was able to change up my shooting style and do a first-person point of view. Um, that's where I have the camera mounted on top of my head so you can see what I see. And the Instant 360 One R is an action camera that allows you to do that. Um, obviously, I can't do that with my Fuji X-T3. You'd be like this big, and I'm panning down, and that would just look ridiculous. So um, having this Instant 360 One R is going to give me that capability to shoot those type of first-person shots. So for this video, I'm going to do a first-person shot of me going through my hiking equipment. This weekend, I'm going on a three-day, two-night hiking trip in Duck Mountain with some buddies of mine. And I wanted to do a first-person type of shot of myself going through the equipment, explaining why I'm using it and what I'm taking with me and what kind of tech I'm taking with me. So I hope you find this video helpful. Please remember to give it a thumbs up, like the video, and consider subscribing to my channel for similar content. Now, right now, it is October 21, and I am this close to reaching 1,000 subscribers. I need that 20 more to go. So if you haven't done so already, please, please consider subscribing to my channel. All right, so what we do now, I'm just going to flip the camera over, uh, mount it on my head, and we will take a look at the equipment I'm using for my hiking trip. What I want to do is review all the equipment that I will be taking with me uh, for my three-day, two-night hiking trip. The weather is going to be about minus 7 degrees Celsius at night, up to 0 degrees during the day. So there's some uh, cold weather uh, camping equipment that I'll be taking with me. So before I do that, I want to talk about my bag that I will be using to store all this equipment in. And uh, as I'm looking at it, I already feel stressed about how I'm going to put all this stuff into a 50 liter bag. So this is my Osprey Atmos AG50, so 50 liters. I really like this hiking backpack. This will be my third year using this backpack and for the fourth, fifth trip actually, hiking trip. Um, this is the main reason why I purchased it was the anti-gravity system that they have here. So there's a frame that goes in here that keeps it nice and rigid and holds everything together. And the way they have it constructed is it kind of hugs your back and your waist to make it really um, solid and make it part of your body as you move up and down, left or right. You know, running, walking, up and down. Um, it really snugs up to, against your body. And uh, the major region is uh, they have adjustable shoulder straps, which is fantastic. I'm a bit shorter, so I can adjust this to how I want it. The cushions are nice and thick and comfortable. It doesn't dig into your shoulders at all. Like all this stuff here is probably going to weigh about 40 pounds while I'm carrying it. And um, I, although I do feel the weight carrying this, it's not to the point where I had in the past where I just want to take it, rip it off my back and like throw it into the river because it was just so heavy and uncomfortable. Um, and this, I really enjoy this system, especially the pouches here. You can see how it's all mashed up and it fits nice and comfortable and it's snugged up. Most backpacks don't even have this webbing here. And so it doesn't really snug up against your waist, but because it has this webbing here and snugs against your waist, it really makes it part of your body and almost extension of you. And it's very, very nice and comfortable where these don't actually even cut into your, to your hips. Um, having two pouches here is great for uh, easy access to like a hand sanitizer or your cell phone or some uh, snacks. Having these pouches is great. Again, it has to do with the ventilation in the back. I get super hot when I uh, hike, and even zero degrees Celsius, I hike in a t-shirt because I just sweat and get hot really quickly. And it's nice to have this mesh backward that you can feel the breeze kind of going through your back and kind of cooling you down. And also it doesn't, um, you know, when you're soaking, it doesn't get into the back of your contents inside the backpack. So this is why I really enjoy wearing this backpack is just for this how they have it engineered and uh, the comfort it does. Um, this does a really good job for in terms of comfort in 40 pounds of gear. Here is a whistle, a safety whistle in case I get lost, uh, I can ask for help or a bear is coming after me. Although it's probably too late by the time I make that noise, but uh, it's just a nice safety feature to have on your backpack. So the next thing I have is just a Marmot ground tarp for my tent. And then for a tent, I have the McKinley Cruen 2. Uh, this is a two-person tent, but that's 
uh, like most two-person tents, it's really a person like lying side by side and, and that's it. There's no other room. Um, so I kind of treat this as a one-person tent. I know it's a bit heavy, but I do enjoy having extra space. I used to have the MSR NX1, which is just a one-person tent. And uh, that was like a coffin. I couldn't move in and around in it. At night, I felt claustrophobic and I just couldn't do uh, one-man tents. So now I hike with the two-person tent, but only use it for myself because I do enjoy the extra room and the extra weight, I think, for my own sanity. And not feeling like I'm stuck in a coffin just feels much better. Uh, in terms of sleeping bag, I have the Mountain Hardware Laminate Z Flame 20 Dew uh, Fahrenheit to minus 6 degrees Celsius. This weekend is supposed to go down to minus 7 in the evenings, so I think uh, this is more than enough for uh, for the weekend to kind of keep me nice and warm. It's a mummy type um, sleeping bag, so you can put the hood over if you get really cold. And I've used this a few times now, especially in the autumn and uh, winter camping. So this is nice and compressed. In terms of comfort, I have a Sea to Summit Eros pillow that you just blow up. It has a nice felt liner uh, on the top for your head, and I really enjoy this. I take this on, on a lot of trips as well. I have the insulated V Ultralight SL sleeping pad by Climate. So this is the sleeping pad here, and it's rated 4.4, which means it's four season comfort. So when you sleep on the ground, uh, when you uh, sleep on the ground, I'm gonna use this as my body, uh, the ground actually absorbs heat from your body, and so it makes you cold at night. And having insulated air helps kind of insulate that body warmth um, to your body and kind of keeps the cold air um, away from you. So uh, this is very important to have in winter. And I've used this in my hammock camping as well as ground temp, um, ground tenting, and it's been fine. And despite how thin it is, I've never had any leaks so far. Knock on wood on that. I probably won't be taking this, but this is Sea to Summit. Uh, liner so it adds an additional 10 degrees celsius to your sleeping bag so i compare this with this and then it'll be rated to um yeah don't know i can't do my math right now anyways it'll be warmer um so it adds a 10 degrees celsius to this to um for warmness and so now i'm i'm at i think i'll be fine i don't think i'll need it it's minus seven this degrees Celsius and with some additional layer of clothing I'll be fine It'll just be one less thing I have to carry um, in terms of my cooking uh, I use actually I just switched to this system last year I used to use a jet boil but I decided to purchase a Tox titanium 1100 milliliter pot um, cooking system and I have a MSR pocket rocket here it's very light and then isobutane tank here, I like it because everything fits into one system. And then I find with the dehydrated meals, you need quite a bit of water. And uh, for, you know, for filling the dehydrated meal, but also I want some water for some tea or for coffee. And I found that this worked uh, the best for having just a bowl at once, having all the water and using it for different things, more so than my, my jet boil. And then this has served me very well. Snacks, um, this is from Costco. No, old Brito specialty meats, just original beef turkey, and then some protein bars. I am going to be doing quite a bit of hiking, and so we want to make sure that we have enough calories and protein. So I'm not going to take all this, obviously, I'm just going to take three or four bars. And then in terms of cookware, I have the Digimon cookware, I like, and just some fork and spoon. I just like this plate because it's, it's nice and light, doesn't take up a lot of room, it's pretty hearty. And uh, who doesn't like, who doesn't like Digimon? So we're bringing back some childhood memories there. And then for a pocket knife, I have the Benchmade Super Freak. And I really enjoy this knife. It looks super nice. It is wicked sharp. I use this uh, for cutting up my meals as well as like anything around my hiking trip. Um, I really enjoy this. Yeah. All right, in terms of food and snacks. Oops. In terms of food and snacks, dehydrated meals I prefer just because it's it's light, easy to carry, doesn't take up a lot of space. So I have the Packers Country, I have the Pad Thai, the Cashew Curry Rice, and then this is from Alpine Air Spicy Sacha Pasta. And then I saw this recently in my local store, 50% off, pre-cooked macaroni. Um, so you just put water in here and then you yeah, have some macaroni. 
and then probably just add it with some steak on the first night just for some carbs and then most importantly i can't live without is um it's a coffee for the mornings or even for the evenings just to kind of get me going through the day um some chips from fruit cups those are kind of the, the snacks i'll be taking with me on my trip next um important stuff is uh, water water is very important and so this is something i purchased last year and i've used it twice and it's worked out really well this is the msr um filter system and this is kind of neat where it has um you know clean water and dirty water and then there's the filtration that goes in between so you hook it up to here and it goes down here so last year uh when the campsites we had we didn't have a water pump and um we didn't realize that when we got there and we had no access to water but we had lots of snow and so what we did was we put all the snow in here melted it and then we filtered it through here and um yeah so this is a great way to filter your system it's a lot easier than a hand pump i used to have the msr hand pump it took forever and it clogged very easily but this water filtration system works really quickly really efficiently and so uh, this is a very important thing for us to have is this water filter Next thing I have is this Laplander branch saw This is to use to cut down branches for firewood uh, We use this quite a bit on dead branches. They're too big. Let me just kind of hack it up. I Have bear spray. We are in bear country and apparently according to the conservation officer there are some bear sightings where we're going and um, also that they were trying to fatten up before hibernation. So there's some increased bear activity. So bear spray. If you don't have bear spray, find the slowest runner in your group and just push them over. I still plan to do that anyways, even with the bear spray. Um, just some cheese its snaps and twists. Uh, waterproof fire sticks because it is winter now. We just got a fresh snow fire. I think might, some things might be damp. So I am bringing some of these fire sticks to help start the fire. Um, entertainment, just if we have time, just to play uh, some cards, just to play some entertainment. And then foil mylar rescue blanket, um, just in case it gets really cold for some reason or we lose a uh, sleeping bag, at least we have some file, just as a safety precaution. I have something called my safety kit, I just have it in an out pouch. It contains um, all the safety things I need. Uh, you know, different types of bandages, gauze, uh, scissors, tweezers, um, tensor bandage in case I need it, some medication. Um, then this is really important uh, to have in case someone gets hurt. Hopefully no one does, but nice to have it on. In terms of lighting, I have two pieces of light. I have the, what's it, Petzl Tika R, which is kind of neat. Um, it has different light modes. Brightness and then it has a red uh, lamp at night as well. And so I really like this. this has worked really well for me in the past. Okay, next I have this Tech Fire USB lighter. Um, I did a review on this. If anyone's interested, to see I'll put a link up below. Uh, but yeah, so this is instead of uh, regular matches, I have this, and I find it you know works well in cold. Cold weather as well as windy areas. I don't have to worry about that. Uh, lighting, I have this e-scene um, light that I bought off Amazon. It's it's pretty light. It's solar power if you need to. It's USB. You can charge it up. There's internal battery. And then um, it has different light settings. And then you can pop it up to have, you know, depending on brightness. If you want to flood more light, you pop this out. If you want more concentrated beam, you just push this down. And when you shut it off, it's actually... You can't see it now, but it's, it's glow in the dark as well, material. And so I use this around the campsite. We would place this on the picnic table um, so everyone can see, as well as when I'm in my own tent, I can hang it up and have some light. I have paracord. I think we might have to throw our fruit up in the trees. And so having some paracord, even for, for tent purposes, is kind of nice. 
And then necessities is I have some baby wipes. I won't be taking the whole package. I'll be taking some baby wipes just to kind of for sanitation purposes. This is obvious why you need it. And then I'm also taking some hand warmers. Throw in my if it gets too cold, I can throw this into my sleeping bag or into my mitts. And then in terms of clothes, it's just stuff for outerwear. Um, some windproof pants for the evening. I got my Oakley sunglasses. Um, you know, some toques, some mitts, just uh, for the evenings. So that is, oh, one thing I want to talk about is the tech that I am bringing. So I am bringing my Fuji X-T3 because it is weather resistant up to minus 10 degrees Celsius. I am bringing the 35 F2 lens. This is nice, compact and small. Again, it is water, oh, not water, it's weather resistant. I have the 23 adapter on here because I prefer this over the original 35. And then I'm also bringing the Manfrotto Pixie tripod and uh, an extra battery as well. So I plan to do some night photography using this camera. Uh, I am going to be picking up a shutter release cable tonight so I can take some uh, bulb photography. So I'm looking forward to doing some nightscape photography with the camera. Um, I'm also bringing the Rokinen 12mm uh, manual uh, 2 f2 lens with me. Again, this is for landscape and for night photography. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos of people using this for night photography, so uh, I'm kind of excited to, to try this out. Uh, I have a little newer pouch to uh, put the lens in to keep it safe. And then I have a Manfrotto compact monopod, which I will be using for, um, well, just for photography. Um, especially this one doesn't have OIS in it, and so, uh, or, I mean, IBIS in it. And so having this will help kind of stabilize some of the footage, especially in the evenings. And then also an Aki uh, power bank. Um, I think this is 20,000 and it's uh, this is heavy but I needed to charge my camera and also the instant 360 1R which I'm filming on right now will be coming with me we're going to do some nice 360 shots on it all right so that in a nutshell is all the equipment I am taking with me on a three-day two-night hiking trip out in Duck Mountain okay that was interesting. It actually just uh, powered itself off and I think it overheated. So after about 25 minutes, um, it just stopped recording and then it turned itself off and it wouldn't turn on again. Um, it's, and I think it had to do with um, the battery overheating and it just turned itself off. And it took a, after five minutes, I was able to turn it back on and start recording again. So I don't know if anyone else has that issue with the Instant 361R. Okay, getting back to the video, um, that's all the equipment I am taking with me. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it down below. I am going to be using the Insta361R on my hiking trip as long with the Fuji X-T3 and the 12mm f2 lens and the 35mm f2 lens. I'm going to do a review on both those lenses on the trip and hopefully have some really cool shots, especially night photography shots. Alright, so thank you guys for watching and until next time.